Um, my name is Nina Patel. I'm a junior at Emory, double majoring in MBB and Anthro and Human Bio. And today I'm going to talk to all of you about Camellia sinensis, which is commonly known as T, and it's found in the Theaceae family. <laughs> so, a quick overview of what we will be talking about. It is one of the oldest drinks in the world. Its origins date back to over 5,000 years ago in China. Today, it is the second most widely consumed beverage in the world after water. There are three main types of tea. There's green tea, oolong tea, and black tea. Green tea is mainly consumed in Asian countries, and black tea is consumed in Western countries, and oolong is also consumed in Asian countries. I will be also going over the botanical description, traditional uses, chemistry, <coughs> biological activity, some of the clinical studies, and current uses of the plant. So to start out with the botanical description, um, it's grown 1,000 to 7,000 feet above sea level in about 50 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit with annual rainfall about 80 to 90 inches per year. So it's a pretty humid climate. It's grown in terraced hillsides and open fields. It can be grown as a tree or shrub and um, it grows with like green short stalked leaves and white flagrant flowers which occur in clusters of two to four with yellow stamens there and um, it does grow with a fruit and the fruit contains anywhere from two to four seeds. It is a self-pollinating plant and there are four main varieties of it. There's the Chinese one which is commonly known as the Bornea, the Indian one which is known as the Psalm and then there's a relative of the Chinese and the Indian and the main difference between all of them is in the leaves, like the um, Assam one has a bigger leaf, well, uh, where, whereas the Chinese one has a smaller one. Some of the traditional uses, um, tea has a lot of uses, so these are just a couple of them. It's often drunk as a bitter medicinal drink. Um, as a diuretic, antitoxin, and a mild disinfectant. It does contain trace amounts of fluoride, so for centuries it's been used as a mouthwash and after meals. It's also used to wash the hair. Um, black tea is rich in tannins, so it's been used to treat diarrhea and headaches, and it also has hypocholester hypocholesteremic properties. It's been used to calm the mind and for meditation for centuries by Taoists and Buddhists. Um, it's also used to, for hypertension um, and infusions of the tea, which are commonly prepared by boiling water and steeping leaves in there, um, leaves in there, are used to treat fungoid infections and other infections of the foot. And as you can see in that picture, um, damp tea bags are often put on the eyes to relieve sore eyes, and they're also put on the skin for skin rashes and insect bites. Um, it's also um, infused in a lot of um, culinary cuisines. Um, tea houses are very, very common. Um, you can still find them in Great Britain and they've been around for centuries. Um, for example, in Japan there was a really big culture with tea houses and a lot of calligraphy and paintings evolved from it. It's also an economically very important plant. Um, about 165 million cups of tea are consumed daily and about two-thirds of the world drinks a cup of tea in the morning. Um, and 2.2 million tons of it are produced annually. And it's a, it has a very interesting history. For example, one of the reasons India was colonized was because the British were looking for another place to grow tea because they wanted to outcompete China. And also, um, the opium trade revolved around tea, too. Um, the chemistry and the pharmacology um, in tea, there are three main constituents. There's caffeine, theanine, and the polyphenols. Caffeine and um, the catechins, um, there are four main ones which are shown in this picture in EGCG, which is epigolocatechin 3 gallate is the major one. And um, the catechins and caffeine are responsible for the bitter astringent flavor of tea and um, for the stimulatory effects, whereas theanine is very interesting because it's an amino acid and acts in opposition to the caffeine. So it's used to calm and clear the mind, and this might be one of the reasons that the Taoists used it a long time ago. And in a cup of green tea, there can be anywhere from 300 to 400 milligrams of polyphenol and about 10 to 30 milligrams of EGCG. And many of the biological studies, clinical studies, have focused on the preventive aspects of tea, and they've all revolved around EGCG since it is the main catechin found in green tea. Um, for example, there was a preventive study done on breast cancer where they took 
um, immortalize non-cancerous <laughs> breast epithelial cells and they expose them to BAP and NNK. And um, NNK is a carcinogen that's derived from tobacco and BAP is also derived from tobacco but it's also found in the environment and in um, the diet. And they expose these cells to that so they got cancerous and then um, they either gave them um, EGCG or a control treatment and they found that when given EGCG they um, there was like decreased DNA damage, decreased production of reactive oxygen species as seen in that graph and decreased cell proliferation. So it did block the acquisition of some of the cancer properties. Um, an in vivo study was da done in mice and this was also looking at the preventive aspects. So um, through a technique which was a periadventile cup, they induced these mice to have atherosclerosis and develop plaques. And um, the mice with either evolving or established atherosclerosis were either given EGCG or PBS, which is a control. And um, they took results after 21 and 42 days, and they found that if they were given this, um, they the mice with the evolving lesions had a decreased plaque size, whereas the ones that already had the evolved lesions, nothing happened, which is really interesting because it shows that green tea might prevent the preventive aspects, but once the disease is already established, it might not be able to help a lot. Um, the biological activity, um, EGCG has a wide variety of targets in the body. Um, this table over here shows some of the targets, um, some of the cancer targets it targets, and it targets a variety of transcription factors, protein kinases, um, for example, NF-kappa B, which we've talked about a lot in class. It um, decreases that. It also um, targets cyclins. Some of the clinical studies, um, one study looked at the effects of the catechins in treating obesity. So it took 70 patients, which were aged 20 to 69 years of age, and they were given um, this supplement for three months. And at the end of it, they found that there was a decrease in 4.6% of mean body weight and 4.48% of waist circumference. Um, the study with cancer, again, was looking at the preventive aspects of tea. This one took um, males with high-grade prostate, intraepithelial neoplasia, and males with this are more likely to develop um, prostate cancer within a year. So they fed these males three capsules of green tea, which were 200 milligrams of each for an entire year. And at the end of the study, they found that these males um, had a 30% decreased chance of developing tumors. Um, only one male that was fed the supplements developed tumors, whereas nine in the <coughs> control did. And that over there is a picture of AR25, which was used in um, the clinical study for obesity. Some contraindications. Um, it should be avoided if you are on antidepressants, MAOIs, or dopaminemetic drugs. It is also protease inhibitor, so it should be avoided and not be taken with other ones such as bortezomib. And um, a few side effects have been observed in clinical trials. Another thing to watch out for is because it does contain caffeine. Not um, too much of it should not be taken, otherwise you can experience some of the side effects of it. Um, in some, there have been some cases where liver toxicity has been reported, and it should also be avoided if you're on anticoagulants such as warfarin. Some current uses in allopathic and CAM therapies. Um, the first FDA approved botanical drug, which is known as polyphenol E or Varigrin, was derived from this plant. It's used to treat anogenital warts. And um, for this treatment, um, it's a topical medication. So you have to apply it three times daily to the site and it can't be applied for more than 16 weeks. And it contains over 65% of it is derived from um, EGCG. And um, it's very, there are a lot of products on the market and herbal supplements that contain green tea. Some of these, as I already discussed, um, obesity. It's also found in a lot of skin products, from example, Estee Lauder, L'Oreal, toothpaste, toothpaste, hair shampoos, and conditioners. Um, the conclusions um, tea has been around for centuries. 
It is an economically relevant good. Um, it has a lot of antioxidant properties. It's been a lot of preventive studies. Um, it's economically important and it's involved in many pathways in the body.